Am I making sense? I feel like I'm just rambling. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Beauty Bar. So today we are going to be talking about sulfates. There's been a lot of uh, misconception, I think, about sulfates and different ingredients that are in our products. Sulfates, parabens, gluten, um, dimethicone. There's just a lot of ingredients that I think people have, they have a misconception about and or they're not fully educated on your ingredients due to your scalp and hair and body. So I am going to go over these little by little. So today we are gonna focus on sulfates. Um, this video is gonna be a little choppy also because I had to get up a couple times. I am gonna just gonna kinda piece everything together. My hair is a little different in some of the videos. It's drying currently. Also, I'm going to say this right in the beginning here. It's October, so I wanna see those ghost emojis down there um, in the comments to enter in my giveaway that's going to be in December, 12, 13, 19. So Friday the 13th in December is gonna be someone's lucky day to win my next um, giveaway, which I'll put here, a bunch of mini wow products, color wow. Um, which I'm sure you guys have seen has been all over the place lately. For the next couple of months, I'm really going to be focusing on hair. Um, I know in my last few, or my last 20 some odd videos, it's all really been makeup and face based. So I'm really gonna turn the corner here and really focus on hair and chemicals. So I am gonna flip flop a little bit. There are gonna be some face in there a little bit, but um, I really wanna focus in on hair. With the weather changing and everything like that, um, people's hair routines change or should be changing, and we'll talk about that in another video. So I wanna make sure that this next giveaway is hair-based. So make sure you put those little ghost emojis down there and I will pick a winner 12, 13, 19. Make someone's Friday the 13th a lucky day. So let's continue on with sulfates. In the last five to 10 years, I wanna say, sulfates and parabens have been like a hot topic, not a hot topic, but like have been talked about a lot. And I think people are unclear really what sulfates and parabens are. You know, where I work, I have a lot of transient clientele. A lot of them, you know, they wanna know if they're, what I'm using is sulfate free or paraben free, um, gluten free. There's a lot of things out there now, you know, if it's tested on animals, if it's, you know, it's just, there's always something, you know, cause everybody is much more aware. But I think people are, a lot of people are much more aware without the education. They are just kind of like on a bandwagon, but there's a lot of misleading and misunderstanding. So I just kind of wanted to clear things, clear things up a little bit for the, the few people that actually do watch. So I have some screenshots that I'm gonna stick in here that I pulled up. Oh, first. So look at this it is a sign that my girl Krista made for me for my birthday. And it's absolutely freaking adorable, isn't it? I just wanted to, you know, let her know that it's here and um, is fully representing. So thank you, Krista, my dear friend, for making that for me. So let's talk about sulfates. So sulfates is basically salt mixed with a metal. I am by no means any type of scientist. I just like science. So, and I like chemical reactions and stuff like that. So to me, chemicals are exciting. Mixing of things, which makes sense because I love color. Color is my thing and you know, yes, my hair is what? And I have no makeup on again. You're welcome, mom. So I like science and I like the whole mixing. That's the reason why I like cooking and baking. And the reason why I love color so much is it's all about the chemical process and I love that. So sulfates are, oh, by the way, this is on a St. Jude's pad. If you don't know what St. Jude's is, are a nonprofit medical hospital, research hospital, and they take care of kids. Like if you ever feel the need to donate, St. Jude's is a really good place to donate. We donate every year. Um, we donate to, we kind of cycle through what we donate to every year, but St. Jude's um, is a good one too, by the way. It's purely run on like grants and um, donations. So just want to put that out there. If you feel like you want to do something good. Anyhow, so sulfates are in a lot of things. It's in your detergents, soap, body wash, anything that is foaming, basically. Sulfates are a surficant, which is a foaming agent or anything like that. A surfacant, I'll put the little thing in here, but basically it's just anything that um, 
emulsifies or foams, detergent, anything like that, that sulfate plays a role as a surfacant in the ingredient list. You know, because you need your perfumes, you need your moisturizers and you know, all that other stuff to make a, comp to make a product. Okay, so I grabbed here, you can't see them because I don't know how to film a video. So I've grabbed some of the products that we have in our shower. So this is Redken's um, High Rise Volume Lifting Shampoo. Honestly, I don't like the way this smells, but I use it because it's pretty cleansing. So the Redken High Rise Volume Shampoo, the second ingredient is sodium lauryl sulfate, which is the sulfate that everybody's like, ah, eh, stay away from. Um, I actually like the sulfate in the shampoo because it's super cleansing. It does, that's the reason why it's a volume shampoo because it has the sulfate in it, which takes everything out the hair, makes it volumized. This is Amika's 3D, which is the volume thickening shampoo. Um, you guys all know that I have super thin, fine hair. So anyways, this one has disodium laurel laurel sulfonate. So this is a different type of sulfate. And the reason why I brought this one out is I actually, you know, this is the thing. I love the way, I love, I love the way Amika's products smell. They all smell the same and it's like, it's magic. But anyways, um, it's a different kind of sulfate and actually makes my head break out in blisters. So I don't use it, but I do keep it in the shower because I like to smell it. And then Logan uses it. This is Lanza's Healing Nourish Stimulating Shampoo. Um, this doesn't have sulfates in it. Oh, their ingredients is not on here. But I know for a fact that they don't have sulfates in it. They actually use natural sulfates. It's a soap bark. Kulaha Sapori, whatever. I'm not even gonna fucking try it. But there's a bark that they use in their products that acts as a natural foaming agent. And um, a lot of products are going down that line. This is Logan's Body Wash. It's um, Jack Black Turbo Wash, which is amazing, by the way. It's so good. They use sodium olefin sulfonate, in which is also the second ingredient on here. So, I mean, out of the three, the, well, the two, these three, sulfate is the second ingredient, right? This is my body wash. This is Farmhouse Fresh Pink Moon. It's also a bubble bath if you want. They are using cocamidopropyl betamine. It's a natural homey agent, cervicant. Hand wash. This is the Myers Clean Day Hand Soap in scent apple cider, which is limited edition. But if you could find it at your Target, it's so, so good. It smells like apple cinnamon. Their foaming agent is the same thing, except for it's hydrosulfatine. These three are very much so on the um, healthy, healthier side of chemicals. Um, they do use, I know Lanza uses a lot of natural botanical ingredients. I know Farmhouse Fresh does. They are organic and they are cruelty-free, paraben, sulfate-free, and 95% um, natural and gluten-free. Theirs are, I know they're like, there's a certain percent organic and there's a certain percent natural. They're good. I'll look it up and I'll stick it over there. Paraben and phthalates, triclosan, mia, india, formaldehyde, and natural col artificial colors. It's made without and made with plant derived ingredients, natural essential oils, aloe vera extract, glycerin, and olive oil. These other ones, they're not bad. Okay, but my whole point, I'm going on a tangent. My whole point is that sulfates are not bad. But what you need to realize is that you need to use them in moderation, right, with everything. And that's gonna be my thing for today, is everything being used in moderation. So like you heard me say, I have six to seven different types of shampoo in my shower, which I know y'all are like, that's just fucking ridiculous. But honestly, I have one liter in there, which is the big one and that is the Lanza Keratin Healing Oil Shampoo. I'll put a picture of it in here. And then everything else is generally your eight, ounce, eight to 10 ounce. This one's 10, eight to 10 ounce size because honestly, you shouldn't be using one shampoo. There's, you used a shampoo depending on what you want to achieve for that time frame. Unless you're doing something like this, which is for 
thinning hair, hair loss, you know, trying to build thickness. Like honestly, I don't use this in the winter time because it is so stimulating and it drops your body temperature. I have another one by Try that it's a conditioner and it, I don't use it in the winter time because it literally drops your body temperature because it's so stimulating. So basically if your blood is on the surface, right? And you're in the shower and you're wet, the water, the air, it drops your body temperature already, right? That's why we take hot showers because the air is touching the water on our body, which cools our body down. It's the whole purpose behind sweat, right? The science. If it's taking all your blood circulation and bringing it up and into your scalp, then your body is gonna decrease in temperature that much more, right? It's the same, you know, if you know a guy that is taking any kind of like um, like Viagra or like Enzyme or you know any of those like sexual enhancing pills it takes it drops their body temperature down and it sends their blood down to their dick which you know what I mean it's the same thing it's just opposite I don't use them in the winter time because I'm already cold so why would I make myself colder it's good to alternate your products um, when it comes to your hair and your face, like you don't want to sit in one lane and use one product all the time, every day. Yes, it's good for certain products, like if you are using Nioxin or Rogaine or anything like that, of course, consistency is going to help, you know, in the long run, but you do want to change it up. So you can use your product three days or three weeks out of the year or out of the month and then one week, something else or every other week, but you, you really shouldn't or even a month, you can use one a month at a time kind of thing, but you never wanna like consistently do the same thing over and over and over and over again. And here's the reason why. So a lot of products like, um, for example, Moroccan oil or Lanza, they do have more of an oil base to them. And so they are more concentrated, they're gonna be heavier, and they're gonna weigh your hair down, especially for people like me that have super thin hair. Um, or fine hair. Using something with a sulfate in it is going to get all of that off. I have an oily scalp with fine hair, so my hair gets dirty like that, and so I need to get that off my hair, but I need something that's going to actually cleanse my scalp and my hair. I have very sensitive skin. Any kind of buildup or anything like that makes me break out, not only on my face, but also on my head, especially back here, because um, you sleep you know what I mean? And you sweat and all that other stuff, your clothes, your collar, you know, it all rubs and it causes buildup, breakouts, etc. The thicker your hair is and the coarser your hair is, of course, and the curlier your hair is, of course, you're going to want to wash late, less and less. Because your hair is curly, it takes longer for that oil, the sebum, to travel down the hair shaft to hydrate the hair. For mine, it just goes straight down, right? So my hair gets dirtier faster. So I need that sulfate to clean my hair. I have found personally for me that when I use things that have natural sulfates in them, that they don't clean my hair as deeply as I need them to. And it kind of weighs my hair down a little bit. So I alternate. When I need something that's super hydrating, of course I use something that is sulfate free or higher in moisture content than I would say the, you know, this Redken stuff. So I'm in the middle of editing and I just wanted to point in there also. So I go through this cycle um, usually I go blonde, then red, and then dark, right? And it takes about three to four years for me to go through the whole cycle. So anyways, obviously I'm going into my blonde phase. You have to see the process here. When I am red and when I have my dark hair, I use sulfate shampoo less. And the reason why a lot of people steer away from sulfates is because they've heard that it's, you know, it's so drying and it strips the hair, bad for your skin, blah, blah, blah. Yes, to an, an extent, it's gonna strip the hair of color and oils and everything because it's cleansing the hair. It's a deep clean, right? So when my hair is dark and red, I tend to steer away from them as often. I don't use them as often, but when my hair is blonde, I kind of use them a little bit more. And I'll tell you why in a second here. When your hair is darker, you don't want to use sulfates as much because it's going to pull your color out more. It's going to dry the hair out more. So that's why it's good to alternate. Lanza has um, a product and it's called Color Guard. Um, I really, 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 really love this product. When I was red, this product saved my hair. Um, the one thing about this is it stops your hair from absorbing water. It's got UV protectant in it. It's also a heat protectant. So this stuff is amazing. You know, it helped for my color to last longer and allowed me to use sulfate shampoos 
um, to protect my hair because I needed the sulfate to clean my hair also. Um, like I said before, I did alternate. I didn't use sulfates as much as I normally would when I had blonde hair for that reason because sulfates do strip the hair color. So like I said, within moderation, right? Within reason. When I'm blonder or lighter, I tend to use sulfate shampoos more. And the reason why is because let's say blonde hair is like um, also like an open door, right? Your cuticle is open. So whatever is out there is gonna come in and it's probably gonna stay longer than, you know, it exceeds their welcome. Um, Color Guard helps with that, but also sulfate shampoos help to strip pollution and garbage the impurities that are in water out of your hair. Color blonde hair is also compromised hair and it has a weaker state because we've taken its strength structure out, which is the keratin and um, the melatonin, the proteins and oils that are inside your hair, we've stripped them out and made less, right? Even with all the rebonding chemicals out there, it's still lacking, right? It's one of the reasons why purple shampoos um, have sulfates in them is so they, and also feel a little bit more drying and the pH is a little higher on the higher side is because it's also um, deep cleaning the hair as it's depositing color into the hair to help tone and get the yellow and brassiness off. When I wash my hair that day that I wanna have big hair and I wanna do it up and blah, 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 then I'm gonna reach for my sulfate because I wanna make sure that there is nothing on my hair that's gonna weigh it down because when I do my hair, I'm gonna add product to it and all that other stuff that's gonna weigh it down naturally already. I wanna take, I don't want anything on it. So I'm gonna take as much off as I possibly can beforehand. If you're an everyday washer, that's great. That You know, I was an everyday washer too. Probably in the last two years, I stopped washing my hair every day and do like an every other day kind of situation. Sometimes I try to push three days and it's just like, bitch, what are you doing? That was absolutely fucking disgusting. You look like a mess. So if you're an everyday washer using, that would be really, really smart of you to alternate your shampoos um, or your cleansers because um, you, sulfates, yes, they are an SLS or an SLES, which is sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl ether, what did I write down? Ether sulfate. They're just two different compounds. They have a tendency to dry out your skin. They have a tendency to dry out your scalp, which can cause rashes or anything like that. Like if your skin gets too dry, then you're going to scratch at it and then you're going to shed and have dandruff. Not dandruff, but um, it can cause lesions and stuff like that on your head and you don't really want that. So mixing it up is the best because one is not going to be as drying as the other. Am I making sense? I feel like I'm just rambling. Sulfates are safe, sulfates are fine. Sulfate is a salt mixed with metal, remember that. Ultimately, it's just drying. So like I said before, use everything in moderation. If you have questions, put them down below in the comments and I'll get and I'll respond back to you for sure. Or do some research. Like for example, since I grabbed this shampoo and I was like, I used it for a week in my head, like it not only broke out, because I used it, I think I remember I used it for 10 days. I'm like, it can't be. My scalp hurt to the touch. Like, it was like my scalp was on fire. It was really, really odd. I took the time and I started looking up the ingredients. And then I noticed that it said disodium lauryl sulfate, which is just a different compound of um, sodium lauryl sulfate. It's a more natural version of sodium lauryl sulfate but it's still made in a lab. Like it's chemically altered. Like there's um, two different types of, um, I remember I was talking to a doctor once and she gave me this medication. It's the same medication that I'm allergic to, but it was compounded and chemically, like the molecular structure of it was different and she wanted me to try it. I never did because I was afraid that I was going to anaphylaxis. So, but it's the same thing. It's just molecularly structured differently. If you have extensions, Using something with sulfates in it is ideal. Where your extensions are connected, whether it be bead, fusion, or tape-in, you want to, like, the oil is the enemy when it comes to extensions. The sulfates, the SLS or the SLES are going to be the best for you. Also, like, when you're, when you have extensions, you're not washing your hair as much. 
when you do you're gonna want something that's really gonna cleanse that area and washing your hair with extensions is hard anyways but you definitely want to use something that has sulfates in it to really get that area clean because that oil is gonna make your beads slip they're gonna break down the fusions um because it's gonna get in the center and you know break those fusions down tapins it's gonna cause them to slip also um hand tied wefts the wefts are overlapped you know like they go one whatever the oils are gonna get in there they're gonna break down the hair in the wefts in between the wefts and it's also going to break down the thread and it's going to cause slippage in the beads you definitely want to make sure that all like your scalp and your hair is clean and you cannot from what i've seen get that using products that have natural sulfates in them or oil-based products that is my tangent on sulfates um, if you have any questions, like I said, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. On my next video, we will talk about parabens. So stay tuned. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload. I also upload um, a vlog, but I don't really advertise it. So if you want to follow that vlog, make sure that you have that notification on so you can see all those videos also. I appreciate all the support and I'm really, really excited. I'm almost at 100 subscribers and I'm really excited about that. So even though you watch these videos and you're not subscribed, please subscribe because every subscription matters and I appreciate every single one of them. So thank you so much and I will see you on my next video. Bye.